Veterans Day sa inyo. May I request everyone to please stand and please get your hymn books and turn to hymn number 146. Hymn number 146, we will sing the song, It Is Well With My Soul. First verse, ready, sing. When
us pray, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this wonderful offering that you've given to us, Lord. Thank you Lord for the fellowship that we have, Lord, this day, and as we um, hear your word, Lord, uh, please let the Holy Spirit, Lord, work in us, and uh, bless, Lord, the message that we'll be hearing this afternoon, and also bless, Lord, the speaker, Lord. And uh, we pray also, Lord, for the singing of the choir, and um, be used, Lord, to um, glorify your name, Lord, and we bring back all the glory to you, Lord. All these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the choir. Ready, sing. 
service. How are you today, this afternoon? Are you okay? Amen. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's another great, it's a great day again. Another opportunity for us to worship the Lord and it's good to have again a missionary Joey and his wife with us and also it's still uh, grandparents day. So if you were not here this morning and you are a grandparent, can you please stand up? Kung wala po kayo kaninang umaga, at uh, kanina po ni-recognize namin that we would like to recognize you this afternoon. If you're a grandparent, uh, can you please stand na po? Tula kayo kaninang umaga dito. Meron po ba? Meron po ba? Meron po ba? Grandparent po. At uh, we have a special gift, a token of appreciation para po sa inyo. If you're a grandparent, can you... Uh, yan po. Meron po ba? Okay... So, taas lang po yung kamay. Ayan, nanay. Okay, palakpakan natin si nanay. Welcome po sa ating service. It's your day, okay? Uh, meron po kaming uh, konting token po sa inyo. Ayan, okay. Uh, bahay at lupa po yan. <laughs> okay, so you will remember uh, Grandparents Day here at Baptist Bible Church. Okay, kung wala na po, let me just remind you of some things. Uh, Wednesday po yung ating prayer meeting at 7 p.m. po. At uh, if you need prayers, you can uh, just call the church anytime, text the church, our email ad, and then we'll include it in our prayer list. You can get one outside, and you can pray it po. At uh, then, yung ating pong mga activities po, missions, I mean, uh, ministries po natin dito, uh, Thursday po ang ating visitation, and then yung ating pong uh, Saturday class po sa mga outreach program, Good News class, every Saturday po yan at 4, 3, 3 p.m. po. If you'd like to be part of that, to minister to the kids, you can drop by here at church, be here by 3, and by 5 po, tapos na po tayo. And then right after po ng 5, if you're a choir member, they have been practicing now, starting to practice for our uh, Christmas presentation. So if you'd like to be part of the choir, particularly due to the Christmas presentation nila, you can approach Brother Ramon. Okay, just be here every Saturday po at 5 o'clock. And then also the kids, the mga parents po natin, junior choir is also uh, going to prepare for their presentation. Uh, you can approach Sister Grace for that. Uh, Sunday naman po yung kanilang uh, practice po. And then, um, don't forget yung pong ating uh, faith promise giving. As the choir just sang, Go ye, uh, your, 
If God called you to go to some, somewhere else, or somewhere in here in the world to preach the gospel, yan, you can go. If not, kung nandito tayo, naiwan, our prayers can go, and also our money can go. And our, our uh, goal is 70,000 per week so that we can be able to partner, to help in the propagation of the gospel, to help partner with our missionaries uh, like our uh, guest speaker po in Taiwan. Medyo, alam yung Taiwan, gaganyan-ganyan lang, pero medyo may piligro dyan. Sasakupin yan. Anytime. So, medyo nagre-ready sila dyan. So, akala natin okay yan. Ay, medyo may conflict din po yan. The world is always in conflict. So, let's do pray for the safety of our, of our missionaries that are going to different parts of the world to preach this, to preach the gospel. Okay? And then, um, yung pong ating uh, tithes and offerings po natin and our missionary for this week is missionary Harvey Paguntalan. So let's continue to pray for them including all the missionaries that we are supporting. Kung mahili kayo sa Facebook, add nyo po sila and you will see and be amazed how God uses people and uh, yung ministry po nila doon. And then, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be having Friend Day after po nito. So we have a special card outside Wala pong laman yon, walang nakasulat. You can uh, write something on it and then you give it to your friend para personalize on the thing. So you can uh, invite them to come to church on uh, the last Sunday, uh, September, September 24. Uh, in, your, in your bulletin, meron dyang kulay dilaw na papel. Just a uh, inventory. Sino yung pwede mong invite? O pwede mong invite yung relatives. Okay, if you if you are uh, near the place, okay lang po, makapunta sila dito. Your classmates, if you're a student, office mates po, neighbors, of course, uh, and then a special friend. Okay, and then people that you encounter every day po, sa routine, daily routine ng buhay natin, yung pagbili sa tindahan, pagbili kung saan-saan, yan. Uh, mga nakakasalimuha po natin sa araw-araw. You can invite them and write their names and then start praying. Alam nyo, minsan... Uh, Sulat mo yung pangalan, God, minsan pag nag-pray ka, sulat mo yung pangalan. Tapos specific, maka-attention ng uh, Sunday na yon. And uh, uh, we pray that the Lord will uh, allow them to come and then present to them the gospel message. Okay, that will be on September 24. Okay? So, and Paul, do you have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? It's the first time to be at Baptist Bible Church. Meron po ba? Ngayon lang po kayo nakadalo dito sa aming church. Sa napakaganda namin church at napaka-friendly church, friendly church po namin. Meron po ba? Meron po ba? Sa ating pong kalagitnaan. This is your first time? First time or second time? Meron po ba? Second time. This is your second time. Third time? Okay. So, good to see old friends come back. And let's all please stand up and let's sing our welcome song. And as we sing our welcome song, may request everyone to please come and occupy the front seats. Okay, thank you. Let us all greet and shake hands with one another as we sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. call on Enzo to lead us in our offertory prayer. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this time, Lord, as we give our tithes and offerings to you, Lord, and may uh, this uh, tithes and offerings may be used in the spreading of your gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to a special number.
Salamat sa iyong special na uh, number. Hindi ko alam. <laughs> special number. <laughs> anyway, uh, good afternoon. Um, again, uh, we're happy that all of you are here. Ang um, ating uh, speaker tonight is again, uh, we want to welcome back si uh, missionary Joselito Joey Kalimbahim. And before he comes, I'd like to to recognize uh, his wife, si Sister uh, Bambet. Sister Bambet, uh, she's here with us tonight. And si Pastor Joey Kalimbahim is a graduate of uh, Asia Baptist Bible College. He was commissioned uh, to go to Taiwan uh, 2020, 2020, after the pandemic. And now he's in deputation. And patuli natin siya panalangin na nag-uusap kami, hopefully yung visa niya going to Taiwan ay lumabas na itong October. And then susunod na lang si, uh, si Mambambet sa kanya sa Taiwan. 
So with that, and again, I'd like to call uh, the Pastor Missionary uh, Joey Kalimbahin to give us God's word tonight. Alam niyo, pag uh, umakit ako ng platform, sanay na ako magpasalamat. Thank you, Pastor. Malay niyo si Brother Dan maging future Pastor niyo. <laughs> anyway, it's great to be back. And again, uh, happy Grandparents Day. We thank the grandparents. And uh, for tonight, uh, kagaya nga nasabi ni Sir Dan, uh, please pray for our visa because we have been processing the visa since as early as uh, March this year. But because of the new requirements after the pandemic, there are so many documents that needed to be uh, uh, submitted. Like for example, let me just give you an example. As a missionary or a religious worker in uh, Taiwan, they would ask you for a college degree in a Bible college. Uh, most of the time, uh, Bible colleges in the Philippines doesn't have the SEC number. We all know that, right? But it's good that nowadays those uh, Bible colleges degrees can be, uh, what you call that, uh, certificated from the regional trial court to be accepted sa, uh, like in Taiwan. You know? So that's the longer process. Uh, it will take around two months to have that uh, being processed. Kasi may hearing pa sa RTC yan, may mga ganyan-ganyan pa. But it's good that uh, local governments now had been given that power. My wife naman, kaya siya susunod sa akin, hindi siya makakasabay because of our problem with her birth certificate. Maganda po pangalan yan eh. Yung E naging I, yung I naging E. <laughs> so we need to take care of that. And uh, since uh, last August, Mrs. Kalimbayin, Right? We asked the uh, local government in Paranaque uh, the status because we started applying it uh, last May for change or uh, for correction in the entry the birth certificate. And so far, sabi nila, last July, nandun na siya sa Masbate kasi she's born in Masbate. And then babalik yung papel na yan and then i-receive po ng local government ng Paranaque and after that, they will send it to PSA. Philippine Statistic Authority. And that's the only time it will become an authorized document. Accepted naman sa Taiwan or Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. But before we do that, you have to have it apostilled in Department of Foreign Affairs. So sometimes po, it takes us longer time to do or to be in the field because of those technicalities. But there is, will always be a way that the Lord will provide. You just need to exhaust all the possibilities so that... So, Lord willing, kagaya nga sabi ni uh, Brother Dan, Lord willing, sana lumbas yung visa ko by October. Hopefully, yung sa misis ko naman, makarating na ng Paranaque by October. Siguro, in a matter of another one month, makarating naman ng PSA yon. Sensya na kayo, medyo ganun kabagal dito sa atin. No? Unlike sa ibang bansa, ikikiin lang yung electronically, nandun na kagad. Nevertheless, tonight our subject will be coming from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Again, it's good to be back. Thank you for having me today. And I was uh, talking with uh, Sir Dan and Ma'am Sherry about the message tonight. And I always love that word whenever I hear I hear it. Brother Joey, whatever the Lord laid in your heart, that's the one you're going to preach. And I think I also heard that from Pastor Boyd Lyons, I think two to three times. So like father, like daughter. <laughs> and like the son-in-law. So we will be going to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Our subject for tonight, we will talk about courage or this afternoon. The word courage is synonymous with the word boldness, valor, bravery. Another word will be audacity, no? And as Christian, courage is needed in our lives, especially when we share the gospel. Ang gospel, madali sanang i-share. Ang problema, wala tayong courage. We already have the message. Ang problema natin, wala tayong courage. Uh, just handing over a truck. Sometimes nahihiya tayo, di ba? Pagsakay mo ng jeep, the Holy Spirit is telling you, oh, bigyan mo ng gospel truck siya, ng church nyo. Parang hiyang-hiya ka pa, di ba? Wala kang courage ibigay. So yun yung pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi. And uh, our also, we're gonna talk also about our responsibility to kind of 
be responsible about it. And in so doing, we should expect that when we share the gospel, there will always be opposition. Wag mong expect na it's gonna be an easy thing to share the gospel. Classmate mo man yan, kasama mo sa work, uh, irregardless of the place, wherever and whenever. Sa Taiwan man yan, o dito sa Pilipinas, parel lang po. No? Uh, one of my experience sa Taiwan, when I was there working for Iba Airways, namimigay ako ng gospel truck sa train station, translated na into Mandarin. You know, they will take your gospel truck, then before they enter the train station, meron doon basurahan, lalagay nila doon. Malinis naman sila. No, hindi sila tatapon lang nila dyan. Talagang, hmm, tapos gaganyan nila maliit, tsaka nila ilalagay. Ganun sila. Eh, but it takes courage, you know, to hand over this, you know, nandun ka sa train station, para kang, Mom, sir, Mom, please read this. And uh, minsan, ito yung area na medyo natatako tayo. So tonight, this is what we're going to try to look at and always remember, sabi ko nga, when we are doing this, we need to endure because it is for the gospel's sake. Not my sake, not anybody's sake, but it is for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya natin ginagawa yun. Let me ask you something tonight. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know His gospel? What is His gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And that is the power of God unto salvation when we share it to others. So yun yung titignan natin tonight. And as I have said, we're gonna be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1. So let me invite you now to stand as we honor the reading of God's Word. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let me read to you verse 8. Verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Then let's jump to verse 13. Because sabi sa verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me, Paul talking to Timothy, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his text. Please be seated. So as we can see here, Paul, after charging Timothy to earnestly develop uh, and uh, overcome his uh, timidity. Madaling tandaan yung karakter ni Timothy because si Timothy is kind of timid. Uh, Timothy became the uh, young pastor of a church in Ephesus. Uh, kaya kung babasahin niyo yung 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, try also to read the, uh, the epistle to the Ephesus or the Ephesian epistle so you will understand a greater thing ang problema po sa Ephesian church there are a lot of false doctrines and false teachers and yun yung ina-address dito ni Paul kay Timothy, don't be timid because I know the gift of God that's been bestowed upon you and after charging this uh, makikita natin sa verse 6 and 7 sabi ni Paul dyan where I, uh, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. There is a gift in Timothy and his gift is to pastor the church. His gift is also to share the gospel with these people who are, you know, nagkakalat sa loob ng simbahan. Sabi ko nga, pag may mga nagkakalat sa loob ng simbahan, kung ako lang masusunod, gaganyan ko na Pero hindi yun eh. Sabi ni, ni Paul, tell them the gospel because the gospel is the uniting power of God. Uh, walang makaka uh, yeah, go beyond that. So Paul continues in the same tone by giving Timothy three challenges or three appeals in verses 8 to 14. If you will read that later on as we, see, as we uh, go through the message. First is that we don't or don't be ashamed, Timothy, of the testimony of our Lord. Nasa verse 8 and 8a, binasa natin kanina. And Paul also told Timothy, now you are in the ministry, you need to also share in the afflictions for the gospel. And of course, kanina binasa din natin sa verse 13, we need to hold fast the form of sound words or sound teachings which you heard. Sabi ni Paul, wag mong baguhin. Hold fast unto the form nung gospel na aram natin. Marami ho nagbabago na ng gospel ngayon for the sake of 
accommodation. Sabi na, Brother Joey, accommodate naman natin sila. Sabi ko, if accommodation results in compromise, it's not acceptable. We can never compromise the gospel. Huh? Huwag mo sasabihin sa akin si Jesus is human na naging, ta- naging Diyos. Diyos muna siya bago siya naging tao o nagkatawan tao. Okay? So, hindi natin dapat baguhin yan. And then, Paul, what Paul did is after this appeal, Paul proceeded to name people that either turned away from him or supported him. Sabi ko, hindi pala, pwede pala mag-mention ng name sa pulpit. <laughs> hindi po pulpit yung sulat ni Paul. At andaan nyo, sulat niya yung kay Timothy. Kaya yung mga pastor dyan na nag-name sa pulpit, medyo iwas-iwas din pag may time. Kung may problema kayo sa member niyo, huwag niyo ipulpit to. We have had, we, I don't want to share this, but I believe this is a lesson to learn. Sometimes ang simbahan, may mga darating, pami-pamilyang member. Ah, hindi member, pami-pamilyang first time visitor. Makutulala na lang. Ba't ang dami nating visitor? Mukhang apat na pamilya. Isang pamilya, sampu. Eh, ubus ang aming visitor's card. Yung pala galing sa ibang kabilang simbahan kasi daw pinupulpito sila ng pastor. Hindi ko pinupulpito ang member. Meron hong pastor's office. Dalin mo doon, doon kayo mag-usap. No? Hindi porkin nag-mention si Paul dito. Kasi may, may mention ni Paul dito, si Pygelus, tsaka si Her- I don't know how to read this word, Hermohenes, sa verse 15. Ito yung mga nag-abandon na kay Paul. No, una kasama niya. And then those that supported him, si Onesiphorus, na binention niya sa verse 16. Remember, dito minention ni Paul sa kanyang epistle or letter personal letter kay Timothy. Nilagay lang ng Diyos sa Biblia because those are divine words na nagagamit natin ngayon. Kaya kung may problema tayo, wag dito. Doon. Ha? Parang ano lang yan, boxing. Ang boxing sa ring lang. Paglabas ng ring, hindi na boxing yan. Friend na uli kayo. O kumita na tayo. Ang dami nanood sa atin. So may mga lugar ang bawat bagay. Okay ho? So as we examine these appeals, we can sense Paul's passion and also feel the reality of enduring for the cause of Christ. And that's why we endure. Just because for the cause of Christ. Uh, we had a good lunch today, and Monsieri kind of shared with us the, the, alam mo yung overwhelming joy to know that uh, Asia Baptist Bible College continues in spite of just having 10 students for the first year and the uh, I was blessed. I was quiet listening to her. I was blessed because yun daw mga teachers, professors that are coming from different places as pastors, kahit tatlo lang student niya sa fourth year, dalawa lang, they said, no, it's blessing us. And you don't know from those people, baka doon manggagaling yung mga next, ano natin, pastors and preachers and missionaries. So we invest our time in them. It is an intentional decision to invest their time in them. And they're doing it first and foremost because of their love for the Lord and love for the man who started Asia Baptist Bible College. Later on, even Paul mentioned his name here. Sabi niya, ako din, prisoner of Christ. Anyway, masyado na akong lumalayo. Balik muna tayo, no? Okay, re- me- let's remember that many around the world endure great opposition and even death for the gospel's sake. We need to grasp the weight of these words and together embrace the word of our Savior, Jesus Christ. When we share the gospel, we are embracing the word of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay? So ito yung kailangan natin gawin. Our Lord is worthy of worship, and He is worthy also of our lives. But before we continue, let's go with... Andiyan na, na ba yung title natin? With the title of A Gospel Grounded Courage. Our courage must be grounded, and let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Father, once again, we are so thankful for this time and opportunity that you have given to us. Thank you for this crowd that you have brought back this congregation. Continue to bless this church as we continue to pray also that eventually you will provide them a pastor that will lead them or lead them into, into thy word. Father, I pray that you will bless our time together now. Be the one to teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, the thing is, what should we do with the gospel? Because we share it. Of course, we, 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 we try to uh, uh, even just influence and convince. But first and foremost, the first thing we need to do is we should not be ashamed of the gospel. 
Huwag nating ikahiya ang salita ng Diyos o ang gospel ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Uh, Paul, in his use of the word therefore in verse 8, titignan nyo dyan, yung binasa natin kanina, sabi dyan, Be not thou therefore ashamed. Pwede mong balikta rin yan. Therefore, be not thou ashamed of the testimony of Christ. Makikita natin dito that Uh, our witness will always be about Christ. Okay? And because Jesus Christ is the one that saves, hindi tayo. Tayo ay mga instrumento lang. And that is why we should not be ashamed of the gospel. Whenever we share Christ, we are not sharing our church, we are not sharing our culture, we are not sharing our music, we are not even sharing an idea. But we are sharing a Savior. Kaya dapat makita si Kristo. Okay? Si Kristo ang makita doon sa sinishare natin. Kaya nga misan may rule tayo sa simbahan. Eh. Nagwi-witness sa babae, kapwa-babae, at ang nagwi-witness sa lalaki, kapwa-lalaki. Kasi misan nagwi-witness si kuya kay ate, si ate nakaganong kay kuya. Ang pogi naman itong nagwi-witness sa akin na to. Hindi na nakita si Kristo. Nakita, alam mo sino? Si Crispin. Crispin pangalan ni Kuya eh. <laughs> Tinanggap si Crispin, <laughs> hindi si Kristo. So we share Christ. Now, if you will think about it, Timothy is an, in a city during the time in, in Ephesus where there are many religions and worldviews. It is a city where there are a lot of idols. It is a city that is, you know, prevalent yung mga ganong klase ng worship. Wala namang pinag-iba ngayon, di ba? Napakadami dyan, ano? Kulto, nagmumultiply. Kamisan, mukha ng multo. Na, marami ding mga religion. Alam nyo, ewan ko, na-share ko na sa inyo, when I went last uh, August to study basic Mandarin in Taiwan, I, during our school break, I would visit one city from another and Normally, the city is uh, tra major train station is located in those city, and in those city, when you get down, there will be a, some sort of a mall, and you will see some churches, and you will see you may bandera na alam yung bandera na verde, pute, tsaka pula. Hindi alam yan? Kilala nyo, no? Sabihin ko na nga, eh, Iglesia ni Cristo, ay eh, walang parang Indonesia ba yun? No? Meron sila. Nauna na sila doon. Bawat ano yan, city ha. I was surprised. Nung, I think 11 years I was there, walang ganun eh. Munti ko nang kausapin yung isa. Kapatid, natemp ako eh. Pero napigil ko eh. Wala namang masamang matemp, di ba? Basta wag mo lang patulan. Di ba? The Lord Jesus Christ was tempted. Hindi niya pinatulan. Kasi gusto kong tanong yung, akala ko ba niniwala kayo? Dapat ang church building may ganun oh. Para pag rapture, ten, ten, liliparan na, di ba? Ba't ang mga building nyo ngayon, square? <laughs> yung inaatinan nila ngayon doon. Mat matuto, lalaki, laki ng bandera eh. Tapos nakalagay, ganitong oras ang meeting. I mean, hello, kita mo. Kaya ang gospel natin, hindi bounded sa istura ng simbahan at ng tao eh. Bounded on what the Paul was saying and what the Bible says. So makikita natin, we should not be ashamed. No? And regardless of the worldviews na nakikita natin, kasi dito sa experience ni Paul, he was mentioning, no, makikita niya na noong panahon ng, sa, chapter, uh, sa Acts chapter 19, you don't need to turn this, there was a riot that arose in the Ephesian church when Paul started the work at Ephesus or the church at Ephesus. And in Paul's experience, like the Corinth, when he was in Corinthians, there were those in Ephesus who believed that the preaching of the cross was foolishness. And kahit tayo saan pumunta, even in Taiwan, in Indonesia, Malaysia, even here in our own country, when we preach the gospel, they will say, it's foolishness. I don't believe that. I have a different worldview. There will be those that will mock the cross of Jesus Christ. And we as believers should not be ashamed of our Lord. Instead, we should embrace the passion of Paul who refused to be silenced and said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
And that is why we share Christ. We preach Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Walang masama kung tanungin ka, eh, paano ka binago ng Panginoon? Share mo naman yun. Pero we start with the Lord Jesus Christ because He's the one that had changed our lives. Okay? Sa panahon natin, marami na ngayon mga competing worldviews. Isa sa pinaka-dominant ngayon, yung tinatawag nilang therapeutic deism. Alam mo yung therapeutic deism, ang ganda niyan. Ang bilis lumaki ng simbahan dyan. Pag ginamit mo sa loob ng simbahan. Yan yung belief na if someone feels good, someone does good, and someone believe in a God na wala namang pakialam sa buhay ko, basta sinabi ko lang na ako'y believer, mamuhay na ako whatever I want to, yun, maniniwa, na naniniwala may langit sa lupa, lalago yung simbahan. Pakialam natin sa iyo, pakialam ko sa iyo, basta mahalaga, pumunta kayo sa simbahan. Eh hindi ganun yung gospel natin. Yung gospel natin is changing. Eh. It can change life. no? It, change, it changes life. Di ba sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, old things become new or become it new. Yun yung gospel eh. It changed life. Uh, meron ding isang, uh, in relation to this therapeutic, therapeutic deism, no? parang naalala ko yung gamot eh. No? Uh, ano yung suple? There is no therapeutic claim. <laughs> Nabubulol po ako dyan eh. In relation to this, they also believe that being a sinner and needing a savior is an ignorant and primitive and simply foolish idea. Ganun ang paniwala nito mga naniniwala sa taong to, no? I mean sa pananiwalang to. Eh uh, meron pang isang world view yung tinatawag nilang If you know what is atheism, it's merely saying I don't believe that there is God. And when you talk to them, you really believe that there is no God, right? Yeah. But you believe that there is no God. Isn't that also a belief system? So the belief system sang galing yan. Uh, anyway, hindi na yan. Dito tayo, no? there is this radical new theism that said, atheism that said, they reject not just God, but they also reject even the respect for those who believe in God. Wala silang respeto sa talagang naniniwala sa totoong Diyos. Yan yung mga taong willing mong bastos. Bastosin tayo. When you share the gospel, akala mo interesado ka, kausapin ka, mami, nakikipag-away na sa'yo. Uh, nadala na po ako dyan. Eh, no? Nag-spend ako ng 30 minutes sa isang tao. Umupo pa kami sa gather just to share the gospel. Nung huli, malaman ko, paalam ko sa ang reliyon. Saksi ni ano, yun na yun. <laughs> ang tao ko dyan, saksi ni Batman. Eh. Iglesia ni Robin. Hinaan ko lang, ha, baka. <laughs> so, makikita natin. Eh. And that's why we, we, we should not be ashamed. no? And there is this what you call the continuing growth of the so-called world religions because they are accepted in our society. But we who share the true gospel of Christ, we are not accepted. Eh. And that is why Paul encourages us not to be ashamed because they already know, or Paul already knows, and the Holy Spirit already knows, the true author of the Bible, that one day we will be challenged to be ashamed of the gospel. Right? Minalala na naman tuloy ako nung first year ako dito. We were first year in this school at Asia Baptist Bible College. We have personal evangelism. I was uh, tasked with another student, half of my age. Actually, not half of my age. As old as my daughter. Uh, yeah, more than half of my age. Habi, you go out on personal evangelism at mag-soul winning kayo dyan, mag-witness kayo. Nung nakakita po kami nung umaga yun eh, na may hawak na susuray-suray na ganyan. <laughs> may hawak na bundle ng ice. Ice cube ba yun? Sabi ko, ikaw mag-witness dyan. Dito ako sa <laughs> I'm ashamed. <laughs> Natatakot ako dyan. Sabi niyo, Tito, wag mo naman ako. Biro mo yung tawag sa akin, Tito. Ibig sabihin, ganun ako katanda sa kanya, di ba? Pero we should not be ashamed. No? We should not be ashamed the gospel. Ay, Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, Wherefore, therefore shall uh, be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Yun yung sabi sa Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Notice this, this sa sinabi ng Panginoon. The Savior says, 
not to be ashamed of him and of what? Binasa nyo ba? Not to be ashamed of him and his words. Di ba? I'm not ashamed of being a Christian, you know. But uh, medyo pagdating sa pag-share ng gospel, medyo, alam mo naman, hindi ko 40 yan eh. Hindi ah, we are all called to be witnesses. All are called to be witnesses. There is a calling for missionaries, but there are also a call for all the church members to be witnesses. Hindi sinabing all will be missionaries, but all will be with. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, sabi ni Lord. Unto all Judea, Samaria, and even unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we should not be afraid to witness. Witness was the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many nowadays mock both the person and the word of God. A gospel-grounded courage, on the other hand, requires that we take our stand with the Lord Jesus and His word and let the chips fall where they may. I don't care kung ano sabihin mo sa akin, kapatid. Basta isi-share ko yung gospel. I will not be ashamed of the gospel. Sabihin mo mang heretic ako, sabihin mo mang baliw ako. Masyado ka namang banal, kapatid. <laughs> Minsan ang tawag sa'yo sa work, eh, no? Nung, yung Christian ka lang, di ba? Faithful ka lang sa Santa Mesa. Alam nila, nagbabasa ka ng Bible. Ang tawag sa'yo, pastor. Di ba? Oh, eh, so what? I will not be ashamed. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will call me to be a pastor one day. Masyado namang balan to si sister, oh. So we, 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 we should have that, you know, yung gospel-grounded courage to stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, remember, Paul goes on to include himself in this charge to Timothy. He said here, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Paul called himself prisoner. This is an apostle. He is free, but he considered himself a prisoner. Do you consider yourself a prisoner of Christ? If you're a prisoner of Christ, then you are only bounded by Christ. Other than that, wala na, di ba? That's why we can share the gospel. Oftentimes, coward believers refuse to be associated with their brethren who are taking a stand for Christ. When somebody takes a stand in your workplaces for Christ, be identified with them. Hindi itutulak mo pa sila. What if, membro kayo ng isang church, but you work in the same company, kaso naaasar ka dito sa kapatid buto. Sa so, mananampalataya. At sinabi ng boss mo, eh, hindi ko rin type yan kasi ganito. Ay, hindi po. Kapatid ko po sa pananampalataya yan. Ganun ang stand. Ikaw, okay ka eh. Pero siya mukhang hindi okay. Pasensyahan nyo na po. Pare, tao lang kami pareho eh. Pero pareho po kami ng simbahan. Pareho kami nananampalataya. Ganun dapat. Hindi, tutulak mo pa eh, no? Yeah. Many, ma many times, things happens like this in the schools, at work, or even at homes where believers are tested for their stand. Sana hindi na tayo yung maging, ano, uh, tag dito. We should not be afraid or we should be grounded with courage as far as being identified with the true believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Always remember that in the context of this letter, Paul was in chains, he was in prison, and people were, were leaving him. He encouraged Timothy not to join them that are leaving him. But even if all would abandon him, Paul was not looking for their approval. Why? Because he identi identified himself as Christ's prisoner. So what? If I'm prisoner now of literally, but I consider myself more as prisoner of Christ. Willing ba tayo maging prisoner of Christ? Are we really be true Christian? Wherein, sabi ko nga eh, you know, if people come to you and ask you, what makes you different? What, why in spite of the things you are going through right now, you still have that glow in your face? Anong sasabihin mo? It's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope huwag mong sasabihin, it's because of Belo. Okay? Sabihin mo, it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ganyan ang aking muka. Always remember that um, Paul said, he is not looking for man's approval because I am the prisoner of Christ. He was not in chains to earn the popular praise of man, but rather to honor the Savior through obedience to God's will. And that is Paul's burning passion. He is sharing it now with a young pastor called Timothy so that Timothy also would not be ashamed of the gospel. Timothy, don't be ashamed. 
Timothy, continue. Continue to pastor the church in Ephesians or in Ephesus. So the second appeal na makikita natin dito from the Apostle Paul is that Paul was encouraging Timothy and also us to endure for the gospel. Okay? We need to endure for the gospel. Not only must we be unashamed of the gospel, but Paul adds that Timothy, together with us, should also join with him in enduring for the gospel. Enduring for Christ is a major theme in this letter, if you're really going to study it. In verses 8 uh, to 12, Paul explained how to endure, why to endure, and when to endure. So, how do we endure for the gospel? We endure through the strength of God. We, don't, we cannot endure, I'm telling you, with our own strength. We are only enduring now because of the strength of God in us. Di ba nung nasasay tayo, the Holy Spirit dwells in us? And that's why we can endure. Why? Because like Timothy, we are weak vessels. But through God's strength, we can endure hardship no matter what. Ang totoong kristyano po, nag endure yan. Hmm? Naalala ko yung baterya. Eh. Baterya ba yun? Yung enduro? <laughs> it was a battery and it, sabi nila, it endures long, long, long time. The thing is that there is this amazing mystery in the biblical concept of strength through weakness. Jesus supplies sufficient strength or power to his followers so they can endure opposition, weaknesses, and persecutions. That's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made what? Perfect in weakness. And what did Paul said? Most gladly therefore will I rather uh, most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the what power of Christ may rest upon me. The more weak we are, the more we experience God's strength. And always remember that he is enough. Huh? Hindi ko na kailangan ko sino pa. Of course may wife ako. But when it comes to the persecution of the gospel, I need Christ. If and when you endure for the gospel, remember that you have the privilege of sharing in the sufferings of Christ and enjoying His special power. And that is a proof na anak ka ng Diyos. Pag hindi ka nag endure at hindi mo gusto itong nangyayari sa buhay mo because of the gospel, Better check yourself. Or should I say, better check your salvation. Pag <laughs> hindi ka nag-endure, kapatid. And all of this, tandaan nyo, lahat ng dadaan sa buhay natin, finilter na yan ng Diyos. And He is allowing it for a purpose. Remember Job? Hindi naman alam ni Job eh, na nag-uusap pala doon si Lord eh. Tsaka si, alam mo na, yung kaaway natin. And sabi ni Diyos, oh, proud na proud siya. Do you consider Job? Do you consider Joey? Do, do, have you considered this sister and that sister? Can you imagine sabihin niya ni Lord, walang perfect na kagaya nila on earth. Eh, sabi naman ito ni, tanggalin mo mga blessing, tignan mo. Eh, tinang, kaya pala nawala yung mga blessing sa buhay ko. Eh, hindi <laughs> naman. <laughs> nag si Job, di ba? Pagkatapos ng endurance, ano na pala ni Job? Binigyan ng mas magagandang anak. Kaya kung gusto niyo ng mas magandang anak, mag-endure ka. <laughs> Pinayaman, mas mayaman. He is the richest person in Southeast Asia. If I remember, if, if, if my memory serves me right, yun ang sabi ng Bible. Contemporary sila ng mga patriarchs. Si Job, nasa kabilang ano, nandito yung mga... Anyway, 2 Corinthians 12, 10 says, Therefore, sabi ni Paul, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses. Is stress ka mga yon? Alam mo, nagtataka ko, no? Siguro, lola, no? Nung panahon yun, di ba, wala na naman kayo naririnig ng mga word na, la, stress na stress kasi ako ngayon, eh. Usang-usi yung word na yan, eh. No? Yung konting hirap. Mommy, I'm stressed today. Don't talk to me. No? 
So, yung panahon namin, hindi ko na ginagamit yung word na stress. Eh. Ngayon, na gamit na gamit. Eh, no? Yung napagod lang sa pamamasahe, yung magkocommute. I'm so stressed, mom. Please, allow, give me my, my, my me time. Pero sabi ni Paul, even in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, what? Then I am strong. When we are weak, He is strong. When Jesus Christ was weak on the garden of Gethsemane, what was Jesus' prayer? Thy will be done. And one uh, commentary said, at that time, cross, the cross was already finished. Victory was already there. When sinabi ni Jesus Christ, Thy will be done. I am submitting to you, Father. You are allowing it now in my, in my life. Thy will be done. And Jesus came out victorious after three days. Ganon din tayo. No? Kaya sabi ni Paul, let us not be distressed and stressed because of the gospel. No? Because always remember that without Christ, we can do nothing. That's why we need to abide, to remain, and rely on Christ And then we will experience His supernatural strength. Magtataka ngayon mga neighbor mo. Ang dami mo nang dinaan ng kapatid. Bagyo sa buhay mo. Bakit nakatayo ka pa? Eh, it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of my relationship with Him. Now, why do we endure? Or, or, or why to endure? Because of the gospel's worth. It's worth it. Ako simply lang sasabihin ko eh. Bakit? Why Can I endure to be in the mission field? It's because of the gospel's word. Because the gospel's word is that it has the power of God unto salvation. No other power on earth can save people. No? Taiwan may be attacked by China. But if they are not saved, even though U.S. might help them, they're still gonna end up in hell. Right? Tama po ba? Amen? But if they have Jesus Christ, I don't care. It's worth it. And that is why it's worth it to go to those places to share the gospel. Now, we can see here in a few verses that Paul concisely exalt God's gospel. When he finishes with this inspiring description, he says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Sabi niya sa verse 12. The reason Paul was willing to lay down his life Uh, in the mission was that he believed in the word of Christ's gospel. Paul found Christ to be more desirable, more enjoyable, and more beautiful than anything else. You may take away the world from me, but don't take away my Jesus. Okay? Religious people find God useful, but cross-bearing believers find Him beautiful. You can endure when you see the, what Paul saw. From this passage, note how Paul spoke of the God's greatness, His grace and ground in our salvation. For God's greatness in our salvation, there are three phases in these verses that captures God's great work of salvation from start to finish. Remember God, when God started with us, He promised to finish it. He said, He who had begun a good work in you uh, shall be able to finish it until the end. Para praising what Paul said in Philippians. Uh, makikita natin dito, if you're gonna look at it on verse 9 he said, He saved us, He called us with a holy calling, and in verse 10, had brought life and immortality to light. Can you imagine that? Immortality? Yung palang word na yan, nasa Bible? Huh? And yet, pinanonood mo sa sinehan yung mga superhero na immortal. Pero pagkatapos ng film, asa na yung superhero? <laughs> Tapos na, ending na. Pero tayo, hindi. Anyway, first, God saves us. This is a concise picture of the gospel. In His sovereign grace, God rescues sinners from their awful state and places them into God's kingdom forever. So, once saved, Always save. Kailangan pa bang i-memorize siya? Hindi na, ha? You know, Jonah says, salvation is of the Lord. 
Kung ang salvation ko nakabase sa akin, kapatid, maaaring bukas, I don't feel saved. And then the next day, I feel saved. But it's good that my salvation is of the Lord. And when the Lord said, your salvation is forever, forever yan, kapatid. Kahit ano pa ang gawin mo. Second, God sanctifies us. Paul reminds us God's call to holiness. God save us to sanctify us. We are called to live clean lives to declare God's glory. Okay? We can only declare God's glory in our lives if we live sanctified life. Makikita niyo sa buhay niyo, it's, it, people would tend to, uh, how do you say that? So some kind of either respect or parang hindi sila makapaniwala when he, they see your life being sanctified by God. Kaya nga minsan ang tawag nila sa iyo si padre at si madre. Di ba? Pag sa school mo, ganun ang tawag sa iyo. Pambira naman itong si, katabi ko. Magla-lunch lang kami, nagpe-pray pe. No? Ba't ka ba nagpe-pray? Magla-lunch ka lang, nagte-thank you ka pa kay Lord mo. Kain na kagad. Sabi nung classmate, eh, I'd like to thank my Lord eh. Kasi ang alam ko lang na hindi nagpe-pray pag nagla-lunch. Yung aso namin, pagbigay mo, ah! <laughs> ano ka aso? Tayo, nagpe-pray. Hindi ka nahihiya. Sa Jollibee man yan. <laughs> Sa McDonald's siya. Nagpe-pray ka bago ka kumain, di ba? Eh, because you're not afraid of the, a shame of the gospel. And that is part of our sanctification. Nakikita sa buhay natin. And third, God glorifies us. Notice the word immortality that is promised in verse 10. Paul agrees with Jesus' own, own words in John chapter 11. Verses 25 and 26, when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So when our relatives who also in the Lord passed away, one day we will see them. Okay? If they are saved. And that is why ngayon pa lang mga ka, uh, kapatid, Kung may mga kamag-anak kayo, kaibigan, na hindi pa ligtas, this is the opportunity now to tell them about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ para one day makita din nila, natin sila sa langit. I'm looking forward to seeing my dad in heaven and tell, and, 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 and tell him, you know, when I got saved, my dad cannot believe that I got saved. Because dati, body kami niyan sa sigarilyo eh. Nung nasave ako, Paano ba nangyari? Pinagsisindi ata ako ng tatay ko ng cigarette. Habi, uh, light me a, light me a cigar, uh, cigarette. Habi ko, Dad, I cannot light a cigarette for you anymore. Why? I'm saved. So you're not, you, you are not ashamed of the gospel. And there's you also seeing sanctified life kasi hindi ka na naninigarilyo. And after a while, he also got saved. Kaya, sabi niya sa mga kapatid ko, sundin niyo si kuya niyo. Halala ko lang sabi ni Mary. Eh, no? Yung sabi ni, Jesus, ni Mary kay Jesus, wala na silang wine. Turn that water into wine. Uh, sabi ni, G, ni Mary dun sa mga, sa mga naghihiling sa kanya, kay Jesus kayo pumunta, hindi sa akin. Sabi ng natatay ko, sa, sa kuya nyo kayo makinig, huwag sa akin. Sabi ko, di ba ikaw tatay? <laughs> Ba't sa akin kayo makinig ngayon? Baka magmukha akong tatay. And it's because of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives. It's continuously changing us. Akala kasi natin yung gospel, it only affected the day we got saved. The gospel is effective until God takes us home. No? The death, the burial of the... Kaya nga sabi sa atin, die daily. That is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for the penalty of our sin. He is saving us from the uh, power of our of sin right now. And in the future, He will save us from the presence of sin. Alam mo, hindi ko alam eh, mga kapatid, kung ako'y tumatanda lang, there are times, parang sabi ko sa life, kailang kaya iigi ang mundo? Eh, puro na lang nakita mo kasalanan, no? Mapa, mas social media man yan, kung saan, puro kasi nang makikita mo eh. And yet, we're still in this life because God has purpose for us so that one day He can glorify us. Always remember that God's marvelous greatness in our salvation must be seen in our lives. Always remember that He rescued you and me to make us holy. Kaya kapatid, if you, God, if you claim to be saved at you don't have the desire to come to church and listen to God's word, 
Baka may problema sa'yo, kapatid. Maybe you're not a son. O kung gumagawa ka ng kasalanan, walang chastisement, baka hindi ka anak ng Diyos. Okay? I heard it from my pastor. If there is no chastisement, there might be no sonship. Baka hindi tayo anak. Kasi ang, ama, ang, ang magulang na matino, pag nagkakamali ang kanyang anak, dinidisiplina niya. Iba-iba yung klase ng pagdidisiplin, but still dinidisiplina. Baka sa akin, mas malaki ang palo ni Lord. Sa'yo, maliit lang. Okay? Huh? Always remember that the Lord said he, 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 he had given us the assurance that we will never die. Yung ating uh, death physically, uh, I always put this in my uh, missionary letter at the ending. Eh. Sabi ko, we will, either I will say, we will serve the Lord Jesus Christ until He comes or until death comes, whichever comes first. It means that we will continue no matter what. No? And this is the assurance that God gives us. Death is not really death. It is just a change of location. Imagine from being here, being in, in the presence of God. Because God, uh, Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Kaya nga si Paul, na-trap siya. Ay, parang gusto ko na umalis eh. Sa Philippians, pero sabi ni Lord, magstay pa ako eh. Pero kung ako tatanungin, gusto ko na umalis talaga eh. Kaso sabi ni Lord, magstay ako eh. No? And if God is working in your life, you will have those kinds of situations like Paul. And yet, be assured that we will never die. We will never be separated from God. Okay? So God's grace in salvation is when Paul, uh, you can see that, that when Paul meditated on the gospel, he meditated on grace. He assures Timothy and us that we're not, we're not saved by our works but by God's grace. Nasa Ephesians chapter 2 yan at saka nasa Titus chapter 3. God saves and calls us to holiness, not because of anything in us, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Sabi sa 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. God gave us grace before time began in the person of Jesus. What do we mean by this? God is more than willing to forgive and accept anyone in the family of God, as long as anyone is more than willing to repent, accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, and believe Him to be their, uh, their Lord. Ganun kasimple lang yung ibig sabihin dito. And ang maganda dito, noong paman. Imagine, the, more than 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ had been crucified, and even before that, may plano na siya sa atin. And I thank God for that. God gave it to us according to His sovereign purpose. Sabi sa Titus 2.11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us, So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. It is God that shows mercy to us, eh. In that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. Hindi na hinintay ng Diyos na tayo umabot sa Kanya, eh. Hindi nga tayo makaabot, eh. Just na ang umabot by His mercy to us, by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, that He will die on the cross of Calvary so that we might have the opportunity to get saved. The source of our salvation is not our merit, but God's unmerited favor. Di ba yun, yun yung sinasabi nila? Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan mo at kasalanan ko si Kristo. Walang ibang pwedeng ibayad. Hindi kayang bayaran ng anghel. Kailangan si Kristo magbayad. And that is why Scripture assures us it is all by grace. Paul says, and if by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. His grace goes back before history into eternity and it will extend throughout eternity. It's only by grace, kaya tayo pupunta lahat ng langit. Not because magagaling tayo. PhD ako. Ano? Ha? Ano yung PhD? Pakain, palamon daw lagi. <laughs> this teaching shows a critically distinctive point about the true gospel. Many false gospels are built around the idea that if you are basically moral, then God will save you. No. The cross, I mean the tip on the cross was saved not because he is basically moral. 
In the Bible never says that. We, can do, we cannot do it, but there is one who's, who has already done it. Always believe in the one who cried out, it is finished, and be saved. Kaya yung salvation natin, tatanggapin na lang po natin. No? And God's grace is, is in it. Uh, I think it was George Spurgeon commenting on verse 9 said this, When Paul wanted to encourage Timothy, he did not attempt to persuade him by mere appeals to feelings, but rather by reminding him of solid doctrinal truth which he knew Timothy believed. Okay, now, feelings are important. Wala pong masama sa feelings. But feelings follow the facts of the gospel fastened deeply into our minds and our hearts. Okay? Yung feelings natin must be based on the gospel. You are? And that is why because of this, we need to regularly work the grace of God into our, our hearts. Always remind ourselves daily, especially when we are being or under trials, being tested or being tempted, that we are saved by grace and are kept by grace and will see the Savior one day by grace and grace alone. Kasi imagine ba, kapatid, kung sa ibabasin ni Lord sa'yo ang kaligtasan niya sa akin, hindi, hindi, hindi natin makukuha. Di ba? Tayo pa, mga, mga feeble-minded tayo, di ba? Feeble-minded. Pero ang Diyos, hindi. Kaya nga yung salvation natin is not based on emotion, but based on faith that produces the right emotion. Okay? Our faith must be produced from, I mean, our emotion must be produced from right faith. Kaya napag-aralan natin dyan eh. Orthodoxy, orthopraxy. Not only did God give us grace before time started, but also in His historical appearing in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said the Savior abolished death, meaning He deposed and defeated death. Therefore, He rendered physical death powerless. Though we all gonna die bodily unless Christ returns first, but we do not all have to die ultimately. Death is a separation. No? We may separate from our body when we die, but we will go to the, be with the Lord. And we will not experience the second death, which is the ultimate death, wherein we will be thrown into the lake of fire, those who will not believe the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate death, a forever separation from God. When we die as believers, we enjoy the presence of God forever. Sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.8 at Philippians 1.21. This is no vain wish. No? Paul was very solid on this. Our hope is rooted in human history. It is grounded in the person and work of Christ. Kaya nga tayo ang tawag natin ngayon, 2023. Alam mo, kung hindi namatay si Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo, dapat ang year ngayon, 6,000 plus 2,023, because it's almost like 6,000 based on Bible scholars when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. From the time of ano, creation until that time. The mere fact that we put 2023 celebrates the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, His burial, and His resurrection. It is written in history. That's why many said history is, is His story. Kaya kapatid, napaka-great nung hawak natin na salvation. Dahil pag namatay tayong lahat, yan lang ang hawak mo at ang hawak ko. Hindi ang bank account mo. Kahit nga asawa ko, pag namatay ako, hindi ko na hawak. Ewan ko lang kung hawak-hawak niya ako habang bangkay na ako. <laughs> Ay, ba't mo ako iniwan? Buti na lang, iniwan mo na ako. <laughs> Dati ka problema eh. Ba't sa Panginoon? Wala eh. Hindi tayo problema sa Panginoon. Tayo, ang problema natin, sarili natin, di ba? Jesus Christ is the Isaiah 53's atoning sacrifice. No? He's, he took the sting out of death so we can face death in any form with a sense of unspeakable peace. People who are saved, they die peacefully. 
Yes, there uh, maaring namamatay tayo na ano uh, may struggle, pero there is that assurance. Pero normally nakikita ko yung mga totoong Kristiyano pag namamatay, peaceful yan. Because they can see the Lord Jesus Christ na eh. They, sabi nga eh, turn your eyes upon Jesus and all the things of this world will become what? Grow, will grow, ano, will grow dream. Ano yan? Dim. Sabi nung kanta. As we think about that, let's be reminded that there really is no such thing as death for believers. It's only just a change of address. No? Hindi na si Joey, missionary to Taiwan. Joey, pag namatay na, in heaven. When, now, when do we endure? We endure in sharing the gospel. Paul says, this glorious gospel was brought to light. This implies that we must share the gospel to people and that can hear it and believe our Savior. In this one passage, God has not only ordained the end of salvation, but also the means. Okay? While salvation is by grace, it is also experienced through the sharing of the gospel. Okay? It is by grace, but still God commanded us to share it. Yun yung ating dapat maging goal sa buhay bilang mga Kristiyano. Can you imagine pagdating natin sa Great White Throne Judge, eh, Great White Throne, di pala tayo doon, sa Bima Judgment Seat of Christ, at tinanong sa'yo ni Christ, what have you done after you got saved? I, 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 I don't know, Lord. <laughs> Wala kang may sagot. Di ba? Ang ganda, may may sagot ko, Lord, na aging active ako simbahan, nakatulong ako sa pagdadala ng mga tao, may mga na-save, and so forth and so on. Pero kung wala kang masagot, naku, problema kapatid. And that is why we need to share the gospel, no? God saves people through it. Through, through the preaching of the gospel, to the proclamation of the gospel, through the sharing of the gospel. Paul brought the gospel to light by living out his calling as a preacher, as an apostle, and as a teacher. Sinabi niya yan sa verse 11, di ba? As a preacher, Paul announced the gospel. And as an, as, as an apostle, Paul was sent with the gospel. And as a teacher, Paul explained the gospel. That's why we have this kind of uh, pag-aaral nowadays. No? We know that there are no more apostles today, but we must retain Christ's command that all believers are sent into the world to share the gospel of salvation in Christ and Christ alone. Huwag natin kalimutan yan. Through faith, believers have the same commissioning and same message. Yun ang maganda All of us, we have all com- uh, the same great commission that we should be witnesses unto all the world. And at the same time, we only have one message. We preach Christ. His death, His burial, His resurrection, which is the gospel, who is able to save you and me to the uttermost. Ang ganda nun eh, di ba? Ah, if there is one thing I'm looking forward, ko ano magiging itsura ng glorif- glorified body ko eh. I was telling one of my missionary na nando kami sa isang conference, I hope pagdating ni Lord, no, yung glorified body ko, mga, ano ba, six-footer man lang. <laughs> Ang liit ko kasi. Wish ko talaga yan eh. Prayer ko yan, na yung glorified body, eh, bibigyan tayo ni Lord yan. Eh. And all of us have the same commissioning and message. We are most likely to suffer for the gospel when we share it. Yes, it's vital to live out the gospel indeed. Yet it's totally crucial that we also speak the gospel. Okay? Kaya nga sabi nila, our talk should be our walk and our walk should be our talk na yung pag nakita ka, walang kaibahan sa klase ng lakad mo at sa klase ng pananalita mo. Ha? Sa klase ng pamumuhay mo at sa klase ng kung sino ang ipinamumuhay natin. And in speaking of the gospel, expect opposition. Merong mga magdadout, hindi maniniwala, maniwala ka dyan. Normal yun eh. Di ba ganun din dati tayo? Galing din tayo dun eh. Always remember that we are not looking for opposition, but be not surprised when we give witness to the gospel, there will be oppositions. Paul says, for the which cause I also suffer these things. It's a verse 12a. Paul endured suffering in sharing boldly the gospel, and he boldly shared because the gospel was worth it. 
It's worth it, mga kapatid. It's able to save us to the uttermost. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya po may mga missionary na pumupunta sa ibang bansa, kahit anong hirap ang mangyari doon, because the only thing that is worth in their life is the gospel to be taken into all parts of the world. And I appreciate your church that continues to support missionaries. No? If you support the missionaries, means that the gospel is alive in you. Some of you may not go to the mission field, but every soul that will be saved in the mission field, you will be part of that because you supported that work in the mission field. Magugulat na lang kayo pagdating sa langit. You will be surprised. Somebody will come to you. Tuy Buchi, ni si she. Hindi mo maintindihan. Was she Taiwan ran? I am a Taiwanese. Who are you? Ah, I'm from Baptist Bible Church eh. Sa Santa Mesa. Ah, nagsupport po kayo kay Brother Joey eh. Nasave po ako. Ganun yung magugulat kayo. And that's why we need to ano eh. Although our Jerusalem, your Jerusalem is here and you also need to share the gospel, but we are going there also with the same message. One message. One Savior. One Lord. One baptism. One everything. One Bible. And this is the encouragement for us. Now, how do we conclude this? Simply lang po. True Bible-believing Christians will embrace the implication of the gospel in their lives. Let me repeat that. True Bible-believing Christians will embrace the implication of the gospel in their lives. They will not be ashamed of the gospel. They will be willing to endure trials for it and be more than willing even perhaps to die for it. Na yung mga hanggang sa last breath mo, hindi ko naman sinabing mag-die ka, mag-suicide ka, no? Ang sinasabi ko lang that even at the last breath, at your last breath, ang concern mo pa rin, people needs to get saved. And now, I mean, why is that? Because they love the Christ of the gospel, we love uh, the one who died on the cross, and we are not only hearers of the words, but doers of this too. Yun ang sabi ng Bible. And that's what gives us, true believing Bible Baptist Church, <laughs> true believing Bible believer, or true Bible believers, a gospel-grounded courage to live the abundant Christian life. That is the abundant Christian life, eh. Na kaya mo i-share yung gospel of Christ. Na kaya mo i-share si Jesus Christ. Abundant life is not only the material thing. Abundant life is also the spiritual things in our lives. And the most important thing in our life spiritually is the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we can share. Tayo lang ang pwede mag-share. Alam mo kung bakit? Na-experience na natin siya eh. You don't expect people. Wala ba iglesia dito? <laughs> Kasi sa church namin, nandun lang iglesia, tinuturo kong ganyan. You don't expect them to share the, gospel, the true gospel of Christ. We, God expect us as a church. We are the one uh, that God counts on as far as the God. That's why He empowered us. He in strengthened us. Okay? So let's all stand as we bow our heads in prayer. I hope you are encouraged tonight uh, to continuously share the gospel in words and in deeds. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, once again, we are so thankful for the opportunity to be here. Thank you also for Baptist Bible church that you continue to use here in Santa Mesa as not only they share the gospel in their locality but also around the world by supporting missionary. I pray that you would continue to encourage them because as you encourage them we are also being encouraged who goes to the mission field and more than willing to even share the gospel there. I pray that you will bless the invitation now. Uh, kapatid, kung meron mang anything na you would like to pray before God, uh, I don't know how the Lord had spoke to you, uh, we will have a short invitation na pwede kang pumunta, and we all with this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As the piano plays. Gusto mo mang pray sa Lord? I don't know how the Lord that touches you with the message. Why not come forward and say, Lord, thank you sa message. And I realize, God, that I have to, you know, do my part as far as, as, far as the gospel is concerned. If there is anyone here who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ yet, maybe you need to know Him right now. We are thankful that I believe 
there was a profession of faith this morning as we dealt with one of our visitors. Gusto mo ipanalangin yung mga kamag-anak mo, kaibigan mo na hindi pa ligtas, hindi pa nakakarinig ng salita ng Diyos. Bakit di ka mag-forward? Manalangin ka. Sabi mo, Panginoon, tulungan mo ako, may share ang gospel sa kanila. Malaman nila ang katotohanan na magkaganon. Magkaroon din sila ng buhay na walang hanggang. Uh, thank you, Brother Joey. And then I call on uh, Mrs. Kalimbahit Bambit. 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 Mrs. C. Uh, the uh, Baptist Bible Church would like to uh, show our token appreciation for you, a little gift for, for Mrs. Kalimbay and for Pastor Kalimbay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for preaching with us. Okay. So, just a reminder on February, again, from February 23, our friend day, we have an invitation John, and you know what is this? Uh, itong little thing here, this paper, to really take an inventory of, of who your friends are. Again, this is an opportunity for us to invite our unsaved friends, just like our preaching tonight. Uh, let's be intentional of really inviting our friends, our unsaved, especially our unsaved friends, so that they will hear, hear the gospel and they too would have that, you know, that, that peace of uh, we should have that assurance that when they die, they'll go to heaven. So start, start praying. So really be intentional. Think of that person that you really want to see save, and, and pray that they would come on September 23, 24. Hindi lang sa umaga, if they can't come in the morning, at the evening service, they can also come. So, and also let's pray for... Even for our, our speakers, see Pastor Felix Arma, our missionary Felix, Felix Arma, he'll be our speaker. That really God will use him in a very special way that we would see uh, a lot of souls saved and we will just give all the victory and praises to, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's all stand up, please, and let's be dismissing the prayer. I'd like to call uh, Brother William to come to the pulpit and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Again, thank you very much, Pastor Kalimbaim. Uh, let's pray for him that, you know, his visa will come out soon. Let's pray. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you once again for this day. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mensahe na narinig namin ngayon. Na mga Panginoon na ito ay hindi lang namin basta narinig, kundi i-apply namin, Panginoon, sa aming buhay. Thank you, God, for your life sa buhay na ibinigay niyo para sa amin for sa aming kaligtasan, Panginoon, na ibinigay niyo ang inyong anak para sa amin. Na mga Panginoon, ang kaligtasan na ibinigay sa amin ay ma-share niyo din, Panginoon, namin sa iba, Panginoon. And I also pray, Panginoon, na sa gabing ito, sa aming pag-uwi, kayo, kayo rin, Panginoon, ang mag-iingat sa amin at ang mga biyay namin, Panginoon, na receive ngayon yung madala-dala namin sa buong linggo. Kayo, Panginoon, mag-iingat at gumabay at kayo patuloy na magpala sa bawat isa. Ito po ang pa Aming sama talangin sa pangalan ni Jesus namin tagapagligtas. Amen.